Hey everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today is a very rare sunny day in the middle of winter here in Vancouver. And I'm back at New Westminster Quay, where the world's tallest tin soldier is standing and looking at the Fraser River here. And um, yeah, beautiful light and shadows on this uh, perfect sunny day. Those are really nice watercolors you got. Oh, thank you. So I'm back at my fav one of my favorite cafes, the Craft Cafe by the Fraser River here at New Westminster Quay. So it's a Sunday afternoon and because the weather is so good and everybody's outside and this cafe is super busy with all the tables full. So here I'm sitting out here at the patio area. I got a cup of large latte and a slice of chocolate cake. So I just drew my cup of latte and this uh, triangular prism shape of the uh, slice of chocolate cake uh, containing four or five layers. It's actually called five layer chocolate cake. And this is the spongy area in between using these loose squiggles to uh, define the spongy uh, fluffy texture. And just uh, drying super quickly before my coffee gets cold. It's actually, I'm sitting out here, so the coffee is gonna get cold sooner compared to indoors. Just quickly drying this round dish, holding the cake and the brim with loose line segments. Okay, now I'm ready to paint watercolors in the next uh, three to five minutes. Just wetting the uh, latte surface area with clear water, putting on a first layer of diluted yellow ochre. And for the first layer of the uh, chocolate cake, it's a mix of orange and burnt sienna. So for the first layer of painting something really dark, I think it's pretty important to uh, use a more saturated color. And shading the white dish with some leftover blue violet, super diluted with a lot of water. Uh, and this cup is actually a dark gray color, so I continued using uh, the blue violet which is cobalt blue mixed with a bit of royal purple in two layers of uh, light to dark values. And leaving bits of paper white here and there for the uh, perfect shine of the ceramic surface. Now the next layer for the chocolate cake is cobalt blue mixed into burnt sienna, um, a mid to dark brown for these areas and then dilute this dark brown for the spongy areas, which is lighter and more fluffy. So water control when we're painting watercolors is so important to get these various uh, levels of values of the same color, especially when we're painting um, an object that seems like to be the same color all over, but this actually contains different values. And then painting the shadows for everything using the leftover blue violet kind of gray and that's my finished sketch. It took me less than 10 minutes to draw and paint. Now I'm inside. Finally, a large group of people left. So I found a seat inside and my coffee is still warm after about 10 minutes. Now it's time to enjoy my slice of five layer chocolate cake. And it tastes perfect, not too sweet. Okay, so after enjoying my chocolate cake, I spot a lady holding her dog in her lap and her partner right outside the window. So I really want to sketch them, capture them in my sketchbook. So now I'm actually peeking behind me outside the window to see uh, the couple and the dog capturing them in my sketchbook. And I had to keep turning my head to, uh, to get her facial features. So as usual, when drawing somebody's portrait, I like to start with the shape of the hair and then eyebrows, uh, eyes, including the eyeglasses, the nose, and the lips, and then the contour outline of the, uh, the cheeks. And after drawing the facial features, I'm drawing the neck area, the collars of her jacket, and also a shirt in there. Uh, her ears actually behind the hair, um, drawing the hair texture using loose curving lines. Now it's time to have fun drawing this little dog the face of the dog, the fl fluffy ear, the eye, and the little nose. And the dog is in a blue jacket with the leash on the back. Now I'm continuing to draw uh, the lady's elbow and the forearm area, her hand holding onto her dog. The other arm is actually behind the little dog. And the edge of the table, she's, oh, actually with her other hand, she's holding her phone, swiping it. 
um, her hand bag, her shoulder on the right, the tail of the dog, finishing up her elbow area, and the pattern of her jacket. So it's a pretty common plaid uh, kind of pattern. And then uh, drawing more details of her handbag, a bit of shadow for the flap of her handbag and adding more pattern details for her jacket. Okay, so that's very much it for portrait. So now I'm adding a bit of uh, final details and accentuations around the edge of her jacket, the collar area. And um, yeah, her phone has a solid black case, the edge of her jacket under the dog's tail, uh, her legs. Yeah. That looks really cool. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah, we're trying to get her in. It's really cool. Oh, thank you. You have to be very intelligent for that. I am too busy. Yeah, so it's really nice when someone is giving you a compliment of your work and effort. Okay, now I'm continuing to draw uh, the rest of the details um, under the chair, which are the legs and the scaffold of the chair. Yeah, so on the table, there's um, a paper cup of coffee or tea, so just drawing that. Adding more details for this simple narrative of a lady and her partner or friend. And now I'm drawing the man, as always, starting with the shape of the hair, uh, the side view of the ear, the profile view of the face, uh, showing the eye socket, the shape of the nose, and the, uh, the big mustache surrounding the cheek. And the collar of his jacket is looking pretty nice. Just getting that in. And his upper arm and the back in a loose, free-flowing line. So it's a little bit hard to draw uh, some of his facial features because he kept turning his face away from me. Okay, anyway, I tried my best. Um, okay, and now accentuate uh, some details for his jacket. And that's very much it, the essential details of this man. So as artists, we always have the creative license um, to collage anything uh, together in layers. So instead of drawing those boring buildings behind this couple, I decided to uh, turn to the other side to draw the, uh, the hill on the other side of Fraser River and the uh, newly erected apartment buildings on the other side of New Westminster. And um, in the foreground, there is actually um, a boat containing a lot of abstract little shapes and a wheel in the back of the boat. And last bit of details, just that continuous horizontal line of the land in the distance and very quick strokes for some suggestions of foliage. Writing down the day and date, here's a look at my finished line work. It took me about like 30 minutes or so and the couple now is gone. Yeah, so this is the uh, backdrop on the other side of the window that, I, uh, that I'm trying to sketch and paint. Yeah, so now just wetting the sky area with clear water and putting on some really mellow diluted uh, lemon yellow mixed with yellow ochre for, for the bottom part of the sky and the land. Now wet onto wet, bit of uh, cerulean blue using horizontal brush marks, mixing in a bit of lime green into cerulean for a bit of uh, turquoise kind of color for the middle part of the sky and just let it diffuse with a yellow glow closer to the horizon. And now I'm adding like an underpainting or a very diluted um, yellow tint for the water, the Fraser River as well, blending on a bit of uh, orange and some leftover green for the, of the land there on the other side of the Fraser River. Very impressionistic. So just kind of selecting these colors based on uh, seeing and, and my sensations. Yeah, the top part of the hill contains more viridian green. And just let these colors bloom into each other. And now uh, using thinner brush marks 
I'm trying to depict the shine of the river surface and the rhythm of moving water into、uh, with this pretty simple techniques of using、uh, thin and thicker stripes of brush marks.、Uh, this is very much cobalt blue,、uh, cerulean blue, and a little bit of green, and putting a bit of tint of yellow orange for those buildings there up the hill. And、um, grabbing a little bit more viridian green, yeah, for the top part of the hill here on the left-hand side, just for a bit of contrast, and making sure not to overpaint the piece of land with、uh, too much or too intense of the green, because I want to preserve some of the yellow, yellow orange areas for、uh, the atmosphere of a bright sunny day. And using quick brush marks of、uh, leftover blue to shade the left side of these buildings because the sun was on the、um, on the right, and also glaze on a bit of mellow yellow for the boat, grabbing some leftover bluish gray to shade the left side and the bottom of the boat. Okay, I think that's very much it for the、uh, for the backdrop. Now it's time to work on my main characters. So yeah, for the skin color, I mix orange and red together and dilute the color with a lot of water to get this、uh, light peachy skin color. Another layer of more intense peachy color containing less water for a bit of contrast and shading on the faces. And the dog has a mix of white and gray fur, so just wet that with a little bit of、uh, sun glazed yellow. Shade it with a bit of a leftover orange brown on the left side, and yeah, this couple here they are,、um, they're like fifty-five to like sixty, sixty-five years old. So their hair is like salt and pepper. So just playing with leftover brown and a bit of blue to shade the bottom part of their hair, leaving some、uh, value transition and highlight areas for their hair. And now it's time to use、uh, cobalt blue mixed with cerulean. To、uh, color the jacket for the for the dog, leftover brown to paint the pattern of the lady's jacket. Intersecting stripes and the overlapping squares are of a more intense brown. Just making it up, I think she was wearing a、uh, a purple sweater inside. Yeah, and painting her leather. Bag with two shades of brown, starting with a lighter tone of brown, and then the bottom part of her, of her purse was a darker sepia. I think she was wearing black pants. Just using the leftover blue violet, and shade the coffee cup as well. Another layer to shade the dog's blue jacket, shadow under the collars. And the man, I think he was wearing、um, a brown leather jacket. So starting with a pretty light value, and then a slightly darker value for the left side of his body and shade under the collar. Yeah. So final polish, adding last bit of shadows and shaded areas here and there. And I want to paint another layer for the river surface using a bit more intense blue, turquoise, and so the contrast is a little higher. That's it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. It's pretty quick, spontaneous, and loose without too much overthinking. And it took me about one hour and twenty minutes or so to draw and paint this.、Uh, it's still pretty busy here in the cafe. And here's my other sketch on the other side of the page spread that I did the same morning with my Sunday sketch class live on Zoom. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I update my channel with two to three new videos every week. And now just packing up and get ready to go home. See you soon next time, everyone. Have a great day and spotting more dogs outside the cafe. It's a really popular area to walk dogs.